There are multiple points of contact with this idea of what became glitch art. Um, the first was like intentionally breaking things. Um, the second was, you know, very early. So my cousin, um, my co-conspirator with the, the audio tape players, he had a Nintendo. And every once in a while, the Nintendo cartridges, they get dusty and you get these pixelated fragments on the screen. So there's that point of contact, which is also very common for, for a lot of um, artists in the glitch scene. Um, when I was in grade school, my mother had purchased a uh, Texas Instruments TI-99 4A. It's like this computer that you, it's kind of like the Commodore 64, you plug it into a TV. Um, it had a couple of programs. One of them was a very primitive paint program. So occasionally that thing would go wrong too. So it's just, um, yeah, just encounters with technology failing in different ways and, and finding moments of beauty within that. Um, and then realizing that it didn't have to happen by chance, that it was something that we could bring about intentionally. And then it becomes like a creative medium. There, there's this idea already that like DNA is a threat. It's kind of the threat of life and you can connect it back to Greek mythology. And I think in previous projects, I've been looking at um, the relationship between textiles and computation. I think around 2006, I was doing, um, I was moving forward from circuit bending to making my own sound making circuits. So doing electronic music compositions that were physical, that were embodied not only in the configurations of the, the chips, but situating those chips in a way that um, for me resonated with the materials that I was using. I had burlap, which is a very primitive textile. It's been around for ages and already it's got this matrix uh, substrate to it. And um, I felt that that was kind of the, the starting point of, um, you know, the transformation from textiles to computation um, from the very primitive hand woven structures to jacquard woven structures. So I went back to the origin of textiles or I was using that as material. And then I was taking these very primitive um, integrated circuits, primitive by our standards and making music compositions and integrating those two things together. So um, there, already there's that fascination with material, right? And transforming. Um, so the, the idea of translating glitches to textiles for me came from this point of, of awareness that computation kind of has a close connection with the history of weaving. And, you know, the, the most obvious um, connection is the jacquard loom and the fact that it used punch cards. I mean, the jacquard loom wasn't the first programmable device to use punch cards, but um, it wasn't the last either. That technology went, went on to be used in computing and computational systems. So initially I had chosen textiles to visualize some of the circuit bent um, camera work that I was doing because it, it really, for me, connected back to this, this idea of computation. The images are a result of computation, so it doesn't really make sense to print them out like they're photography. Uh, they're kind of defeats the purpose. Uh, and it didn't make sense to simply display the works on screen, so I had to find another way. But once I was there working with textiles, all of these other connections started coming about. Um, so how can I use the textiles to visualize other um, dig digital material? And if, I, if we're thinking about photography, you have this idea of the image is capturing some semblance of the world as a data set. And those data sets happen to correlate with pixels that when translated in a certain way, reproduce the uh, color values of the world that was before the lens. Um, but like that realization kind of, if you turn it around, that makes any, any digital, like, I mean, can you see the, yeah, any digital storage medium or any medium capable of storing digital information is essentially film in this new world. And any algorithm that can translate data into an image is essentially the dark room. Um, it's how you develop the film. Uh, so it, it doesn't really, 
like how, how I choose what that data set is becomes important. Um, and in, for me, it had to resonate with the, the material. Um, so I started looking at visualizing um, the physical memory of the computer and then started visualizing programs. And I realized, oh, the encoding that I'm using to visualize this data, I can also use to visualize DNA. So I was visualizing virus samples probably in 2012 or 2013, maybe, maybe a couple of years after that. So this was already something that I had kind of um, perfected in a way, like I had, I had already set up the pipeline to take genetic information from uh, a database and translate it into a graphic of some kind. Um, when the coronavirus, um, when it was announced that the coronavirus had, had blown up into a pandemic, uh, I decided that any further designs that I do with glitch textiles had to address this in some way, because um, it didn't seem right to stand by and just continue with these fanciful aesthetic explorations of the glitch. Um, so I was thinking, you know, this is a houseware, this is, is a home, home good. Um, people are being asked to stay at home, but at the same time, there are all these news reports coming out about domestic violence incidences um, rising dramatically during, especially during that first wave. Um, it's not clear where they are um, or where they were after the lockdown subsi subsided, but with high unemployment and people still spending a lot of times at home, I'm willing to bet that it was still was not a safe place for a lot of people. Uh, so I decided to visualize the virus, to use glitch as a way of symbolizing its destruction, 